Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, then welcome. My name's Christina and on my channel, we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. So before you go, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave any comments that you have for me down below. Fenty Beauty just released this brand new eavesdrop tint stick. I have the shade number 11. We're gonna be doing a first impression, a demo, a wear test. And at the very end, I'm gonna share all of my thoughts with you and all of my first impression. So if this is something you're interested in, then let's get started. As always, I'm going to be leaving all of my shade matches in the description box down below so make sure you check that out first and let's go ahead look on sephora's website just to get all of the specs like i said i got the shade number 11 these retail for 35 dollars there are 25 brand new shades and they're supposed to be a one-to-one -one match with the fenty eavesdrop skin tint we're going to be swatching them side by side just to make sure that they are a one-to-one -one shade match it says that this is supposed to be a light coverage long wear tint stick with a creamy smooth texture that instantly blurs while melting into the skin for a natural finish. It also mentions that it is crease proof with a blurring, smoothing, and second skin finish, resists fading and transferring. It's supposed to stay true to the pigmentation, so no oxidation, and the packaging is 100% recyclable, and we will get into the packaging whenever I open this. Depending on what type of coverage you want, whether it be light, whether it be medium, they do suggest either using your fingers or a brush, they also mention using a sponge in case you want light coverage and don't want to use your fingers. I don't know what we'll do today. We'll kind of play around with it. All right, so here's the packaging, and a lot of people were giving Fenty Beauty some grief on how much product was actually in there. Obviously, it is pretty transparent, so you can kind of see where the foundation stick is, but they did do a post on Instagram where they put it all the way up and then you could see that it goes past this. Everything that is like being held right here, you can also use that up as well. Just for reference, a stick foundation here that I have is from Bosma Beauty and this one compared to the Fenty Beauty one is a lot smaller. But for another form of reference, if you wanted to know, the Hourglass foundation stick does say online that it has 0.25 ounces or seven grams of foundation within that stick and that retails for $49 while the Fenty one does have 0.32 fluid ounces or nine grams of product for $35. Let's just compare it to a bunch of different foundation sticks, shall we? The Merit one has 0.23 or 6.5 grams. The Huda Beauty one has 0.44 or 12.5 grams. The Makeup Forever one has 0.44 or 12.5 grams as well. So the Makeup Forever and Huda Beauty one do have the most product, but they do retail for a little bit more and then followed up by the Fenty Beauty when it comes to how much is in here. Okay, on to the good stuff. We are going to apply this. So for me, I think that I want a medium coverage. Uh, let's start off with light coverage so we can just kind of see what it looks like and then we'll move on to medium coverage. And that's what I'm gonna wear for the rest of the day. Maybe we'll just use this brush to apply it so it stays in the same family, I guess. So what I wanna do is take some of my Cali Ray So Blown Clean Blurring Primer on. Let's do this side of the face. So we're, we're just gonna take this and then we're just gonna tap in the excess all over the cheeks. And I didn't freshly cleanse my face. I cleansed my face probably two hours ago, but I do have moisturizer and sunscreen on. And I'm gonna go ahead, apply it directly on the face, and then we're gonna blend it out with the brush. I don't really wanna use my fingers. I'm gonna put it all over the right side of my face. Really creamy really really creamy you see how it's just blending it's melting in no effort whatsoever i like barely press down again this is the 125 brush from fenty it does look a little bit warm shade 11 is considered a neutral shade though actually i, I like that match my face is a lot lighter than the rest of my body as you can see so this works really well for me. And typically I will just take whatever is left on my brush to apply on my nose. I don't like to go directly onto my nose because I find that it does tend to get a little bit more cakey. Really easy to blend. All right, so here is one side of the face with the foundation on. I would say that this is a good first layer. And as you can see, you can still see 
A lot of my acne scarring and active breakouts you can see my hyperpigmentation still. However, I will say that the skin tone does look more even. The only real redness I see is right under my nose right here, which is pretty normal. I usually go in with a color corrector and or a concealer, so that's nothing that I'm worried about. And I was thinking at first that it was kind of mattifying the skin, but comparing the two sides right now, especially on my forehead, you can tell it almost looks identical in finish. So I think that it really preserved the way that my skin was already looking. It does look like a natural finish for me. I would say that this is like how I like my skin looking after I do my skincare. Shade match is great. Let's actually swatch it next to the liquid skin tint. So liquid skin tint here, we're gonna do the stick right next to it. All right, that is the shade match of the 11 for the stick and the 11 for the liquid skin tint. It does look a little bit different to me when it's still wet. This would still probably be my best shade compared to all of the other shades that they offer. Let me let this dry down on the back of my hand and then we can determine for sure. Now what I want to do is go in on the brush and then apply it to the skin so we can see if we get even more coverage. So I'm just going to go in directly on the stick with the brush and it's so creamy like you can just see it melting down onto that stick and you can kind of see there's like excess cream around the edges of the stick right there that kind of is an indicator that it's really melting down to me and we are going to tap it in now just the areas that i feel like i want a little bit more coverage so that would be those troubled areas on my cheeks again using the excess on the nose my preferred coverage when it comes to foundation is medium. I like to get that really nice even base and then I'll use like concealer and stuff to further perfect the skin. That is two layers of the foundation on the skin. I think that it really did even out a lot of that hyperpigmentation and that acne scarring. You can definitely still see it if you're really looking at the skin, but usually I use color corrector and concealer to fully like cover that up on the skin. I think it stayed true to the finish, if anything, it's looking a little bit more glowy than it did with that first layer, but it could be still drying. So we will see how that dries down on the skin. And speaking of drying down, these shades, like I mentioned, they pretty much seem identical now that this one has dried down quite a bit. Okay, it does look like the stick is a little bit warmer than what the liquid is pulling. So keep that in mind but overall i would probably still stick to this shade i don't think any other shade would match me the way that these would and for reference when it comes to the pro filter i think that i'm somewhere between 280 to 90. all right so now that we have this one down again this side i have no primer and this side i do that's the only difference so we're going to apply it the same exact way i'm going to apply it straight onto the face and then go in with a second layer straight onto the brush and then onto the face and then we're going to finish off the rest of my makeup and I'll be back to talk about how this dried down, how it worked with the other products. And I am gonna kind of try to stick with Fenty products. I'm gonna be using the Fenty cream products, the blush and bronzer Fenty lip products. And I am gonna be using the blotting, like the translucent blotting powder from Fenty as well. Okay, I just finished both sides of my face. I have two layers on both sides to get that medium coverage. And just touching the face, it does still feel a little bit wet. I don't think that this is self-drying, but it doesn't say that it's going to be. I'm not quite sure if you have dry skin if you would have to powder this down. I would say at least in your T-zone, maybe like in your un under your under eye, but yeah, I don't think that this is self-setting, but it doesn't claim to be. I just thought I would throw that in there in case anyone is uh, curious. All right, guys, I'm back with my finished face of makeup, and as usual, I will be putting in the description box down below everything that I put onto my face. I'm actually really loving this blush. I haven't used it in so long it's the fenty beauty daiquiri dip cream it's so cute i did powder my face down with my huda beauty i did bake a little bit and then i set my face down with my one size until dawn makeup setting spray this is a holy grail i feel like it makes all of
of my makeup lasts incredibly well. I always have patching right here. There's something about my skin right here that does not want to hold on to cream bronzer, powder bronzer, anything of the sort. It's fine with foundation, but when it comes to bronzer, it just never holds it. So I always have patching right there. So in every single wear test, I just kind of ignore that section and I look at everything else going on on my face. So if you're seeing that, don't worry, I'm seeing it too. But oddly enough, it just happens with every single makeup product that I put on that side. So the foundation is sitting really, really nicely. Like I said, I did set everything down with powder and I always do because as the day progresses, I do tend to produce oils and throughout the day, usually if a foundation is really good on my skin, it'll have some oils come through, but it won't take over my face. I hope that makes sense. A lot of my oily skin friends will understand what I mean. I really like a natural finish. So when I start with my full face of makeup, I always powder everything down because I know within like an hour or so I will start seeing a little bit more of that natural look because my oils will start to come through onto the powder. I don't see any patching. It worked really well with all of my color correcting, all of my concealing, all of my powder. I'm not seeing anything looking too crazy. So everything is pretty much sitting the way that I normally would want it to. I'm gonna be checking in throughout the day and then share with you my final thoughts. It is 1 p.m right now so we're going to probably do a check-in around three or four and then again around six and seven and then at the end of the night correct me if i'm wrong they are kind of advertising this as an easy on the go type of foundation stick you know if you're trying to run out the door something you can easily swipe on the skin get even coverage out of and be good to go for the rest of the day and I think you can definitely achieve that with this, but you can also sit here, do a full face of makeup like I did and get a pretty decent medium coverage full face of makeup. Now someone did ask if I would do a flash test. So I'll do a photo in natural daylight and I'll also do a flash test. I will probably be checking in either sitting here or on my phone in natural daylight. Hey, so I'm taking my dog out. So I thought I would just show you guys how the face is looking. This is what the foundation looks like in like intense sunlight. <laughs> Definitely a little textured because like I said, I overly powdered. I don't know, I think it looks good. Hey guys, checking in. So I ate lunch, that's why I took off my uh, lip product. But here is what the foundation is looking like. I'm filming this on my phone right now and then I'll also try to film a little bit on my camera just so you can see. It still looks pretty much the exact same from what I can tell. This side is with that blurring primer and this side is with no primer. Can you guys see a difference? I don't know, it's like such a slight, slight difference. So no primer right here. You can see that my pores are a little bit more enlarged right there versus right here. You can still see my pores. Maybe it's just in my head. I can't really tell like a huge difference. But overall, if I were to like pull the camera away a little bit, it looks the same. I'm right in front of my window, so it may be quite blown out, but I just want you guys to see as many angles and as many lighting possibilities as you can. I can confidently say that I don't think my oils are pulling through just yet. It pretty much has stayed the same. The powder is doing its thing. The setting spray is doing its thing. So we're looking pretty good. And I forgot to mention, it's 3.30. So I've had this on for two and a half hours now. Okay, this is on my camera and hopefully you can see the face. Okay guys, I am back. It is about 6.30, so I've had this on for five and a half hours now. I apologize if you can hear my fan. All right, so as you guys can probably see, my oils are definitely starting to come through, which again is a totally normal experience for me when it comes to any sort of foundation. Around this time, starting from five hours and onwards usually, foundations start to look kind of oily on me, but what I'm looking at and what I'm trying to make sure is happening is that the foundation foundation is actually staying put um, underneath the oils. So my oils are definitely going to start to like seep through, but I want to make sure that it's not like slipping and sliding underneath there. Everything is kind of staying where it is. So if I wanted to go in with like a blotting paper or blotting powders, it essentially would still be there. The blush is still there. The bronzer is still there. 
I do still have that patching, but it doesn't seem like it's getting any worse, you know? My forehead basically looks the same in my opinion. There's very, very little excess oil coming through here. And I wanted to note, I went back and I read the listing, like the description on Fenty's website, on Sephora's website, and it doesn't say anywhere that I can tell correct me if I'm wrong, that this is supposed to be a long wearing. It does claim that it's supposed to be crease proof, transfer proof, and all day hydration. That doesn't necessarily mean all day wear. I think that's important to note. I think that a lot of brands are very careful about the claims that they make because there are just key differences with you know some claims so all day hydration is very different from a long wear all day wear you know what i mean i'm not expecting this to last a whole 24 hours or what have you but i definitely expect it to last me like a typical work day my husband did mention that i do have some creasing around my nose i will show you guys a little close-up of that and when he said that i was like oh okay it probably looks pretty bad since he's you know he's mentioning it but honestly i feel like other foundations that i've tried previously have creased a lot worse around my nose i don't think it looks that bad to be honest it seems like this foundation is supposed to be a very fuss free simple easy type of foundation to swipe on and go again for reference this side right here is the side that i use that blurring primer on while this side the right side there is no primer i'm trying to be pretty critical about this like i'm trying to think if you already have the skin tint the liquid do you need the the stick i think i'm just gonna leave the skin as is i don't think i'm going to blot either side because we do have that difference with the primer i don't want to mess up the wear test too much by adding too many different factors that's pretty much it for this check-in all right guys, it is officially 8.30, so seven and a half hours that I've had this foundation on. This is gonna be my last check-in and I have a lot of just like condensed thoughts for you. So I'm gonna show you guys some close-up of the face. As you can see, I have produced much more oil than the last check-in in the last two hours, but it still looks like the foundation is staying put as well as the blush and the bronzer and for me that kind of means that i have a good canvas that means i have a good base and i set it pretty well so it's kind of a culmination of all the things but just know that this face of makeup i'm very happy i'm, I'm proud of it i feel like i did a good job <laughs> like i mentioned previously it doesn't look like anything has smudged it doesn't look like anything is creasing i'm trying to check all the areas i don't know guys everything looks really really good and i I'm very impressed by it. You know what I do want to do though is I want to blot the face and see how the foundation holds up after blotting. So I'm going to take quite a few blotting sheets. I feel like I'm going to definitely need them. I don't think that I have extremely oily skin. I would say that I'm just moderately oily these days. So if you have extremely oily skin, this will probably get pretty oily on you pretty quickly. I'm just going to lightly blot all over the face. Uh-oh, it looks like it's taking some bronzer off of the face. Oh no, it's like spotty right here now. Dang it. <laughs> I really thought we were going to successfully keep everything there. But I, I don't know if that has anything to do with the foundation though. Like, does it, does it only matter for the bronzer? I'm trying to just pat everything in. I'm not swiping or anything. Looks pretty good otherwise. I would probably touch up that bronzer right there a little bit, but that's about it. The face looks good. I mean, it still looks like I have all of the foundation on the face. So I think if you were, oops, I like, really messed that up just now okay yeah the bronzer is definitely pretty splotchy i don't know if that has anything to do with the foundation to be completely honest it might just be the bronzer but i think if you were to periodically blot the face throughout the day instead of waiting for an excessive amount of oils to come through maybe you wouldn't have the same issue i can't say for sure i can leave it in the description box down below when i wear this foundation even more so i can keep you guys updated or if i do forget to do that leave it in the comments and ask me like hey have you 
worn the foundation again? Like, what are your thoughts? But now I want to share my overall final thoughts on this. So I definitely think this is a great light to medium coverage. I think that the claim to be on the go, really easy to use, that is a given since it is a stick foundation. Those are just so much easier to bring with you on the go, to pack with you, you know. I think the formulation of it being really creamy is nice because you can easily blend it out on the skin very evenly. So you don't have to worry about it drying down before you blend it out. If you do have drier skin, maybe you wouldn't have to powder this down but it will be a little bit more high maintenance if you do have oily skin because as you saw with my wear test i did have to powder it down and i still did get pretty oily so i would say that you do kind of have to pay attention to how you finish off the face of makeup this is not going to be a mattifying foundation stick i know in the past it's been a while since i've used like really really used a foundation stick and back in the day when i was using foundation sticks the hourglass one and the makeup forever one were my go-to's and those were definitely very mattifying foundation sticks this is nothing like that in terms of finish this is definitely more of a natural finish it really does feel like this is the stick version of the liquid skin tint in terms of how creamy it is how easy it is to blend and i also think wear time well I don't know maybe the wear time on the liquid is better I'm gonna have to do a comparison because I really can't remember if you do end up purchasing this I will say that if you just need very light even coverage if you have redness or uneven skin tone this would be great for that but if you want this to be your one and done to cover up any of that excess acne scarring hyperpigmentation you know anything like dark circles then this may not be the product for that specifically i think it would be great for an even base but it's not going to take care of really intense like uneven skin tone i think this would be a great everyday type of foundation something they just give you a really fresh face and I can actually see myself reaching for this a lot. So those are my final thoughts. Would I recommend this foundation? Yes, I would, but you definitely have to go in with the expectations that it's going to be a pretty no fuss, very low maintenance type of foundation stick. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for even more videos like these. I love filming first impressions. I love doing wear tests and stuff. So if you guys have any requests or recommendations, Recommendations, make sure to leave them in the comments down below for me and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!